Hello everyone! Today in this video, I'm going to be showing off all the toys in Star Wars The Old Republic. These toys are fun items and have a bunch of different uses. Some items help you regenerate health and are a replacement for your class health regeneration ability for fun. Some literally do nothing but play an animation to amuse yourself and others. And other toys have an actual useful purpose. I'm going to start by showing off all the Cartel Market toys and then I'll be showing you some of the interesting hidden toys, reputation toys, and stuff you might not know about. So for starters, if you do have any Cartel Market toys, you can use collections to unlock them for your entire account and not, or rather, not just your one character that used it on. Don't forget, if you did uh, use a toy on a single character, you can get unlimited free copies for that specific character from collections. So for example, if you like the Life Day Hollow Shrug and you accidentally delete it from your inventory, that's okay because you'll have free copies that you can redeem from your collections for that original character you unlocked it on. So now let's start going through the toys. The most useful toy in the entire game is the Revan Hollow Statue. And this is one of those luxury items that I recommend uh, definitely getting if you're a player who has extra credits lying around. This item is a portable vendor. So there are two main ways that players use it. While you're leveling or questing, you can pull it out and quickly sell items to this vendor, whether it's junk items or just gear you really don't need. And second is to repair your armor. And especially players who like to do operations or maybe flashpoints a lot, every time you die, your armor gets a little broken and you'll want to repair your armor very often if you're doing operations. So this is quite an expensive item to get a hold of, especially if you're buying it from the GTN. So there are two ways to get these cartel market items I'm going to be showing off. Um, you can either get them from the cartel market with cartel coins, or you can buy them from other players on the GTN. So the next two toys I'm going to show you are also very useful. So these are the Satil Sean hollow statue and the Darth Malgus hollow statue and these are called portable trainers. Satil Shan only works for Republic characters and Darth Malgus only works for Imperial characters so I'm on a trooper I can't really use the Malgus one right now. How these work is that when you right click them it'll show you the abilities you have available to train instead of having to find a trainer uh, located somewhere in the world that you're on. So this is super, super useful if you are leveling. Um, once again, these are one of those fun quality of life things that are really nice to have if you're a richer player. However, if you're not rich, there are actually two free versions out there. The first one probably won't be available ever again. It's, it was a retired reward. It's a Dr. Ogurub Hut Hollow statue, and it's nice because it actually <laughs> it actually works for both factions. So both Republic and Empire players can use it. It was a reward uh, during the time the Rise of the Hut Cartel, the first expansion, came out. And then, uh, on top of that. There's also the Senya Tyrell Hollow Statue, and this one is the one you're going to want to watch out for, especially if you're a less experienced player, um, you might not know about it. Every December, the game celebrates its anniversary, and this item becomes free for a very short time, um, usually end of midway through December and a little bit of January usually and to get this item you'll need to visit the anniversary vendor during that time frame. You can watch SOTOR.com to find out when that event is coming and it usually happens every year. You just have to go buy the item for zero credits and you can either buy this item individually for each of your characters like just log into each of them and buy it. However once the event ends let's say you make a brand new level one character in in July you won't be able to buy the item so if you want to have it on literally all your characters it is in collections and it only costs 60 cartel coins to unlock for all your characters on your entire account so if you have some extra cartel coins it's um, quite worth it to unlock and then next up there's 
that's it for the most useful toys in the game. So now let's take a look at some of the more fun ones. So this is the Rancor Hollow Replica. It's literally just like a toy you put it on the ground. It does nothing. It's fun. It uh, just it just sits there and glows, and you can put it beside your friend to freak them out or just just mess around. <laughs> and this one is the portable Hollow Dancer. Um, this one's actually from the I think it's from the Digital Deluxe Pack. So it's not for sale on the GTN or Cartel Market. Oh, you can't see her very well, but there's a Twi'lek dancing. Oh, there we go. There's a Twi'lek dancing. And uh, the digital deluxe version, I think you can still buy it on slipstore.com slash buy. It's like $5 and you get a couple of the toys I will show you later too. Next up is the Hollow Projector Disguise, Disguise, which turns you into a hologram Woo! and you can run around like that and other players will see you in your hologram form which i i think is really cool unfortunately you can't do a lot of things in your hologram form um so if you use any abilities it'll break it and if you try to like dance it'll break it next up is one of my personal stupid favorites is the hollow shrub disguise it um it, it turns you into a hologram of a tree. If you try to press your arrow keys to move around, you can't move. <laughs> it's just um, you as a tree. <laughs> and you can spin around, but that's about it. <laughs> it, it, doesn't even, it doesn't even do anything. Like, nothing. Um, to exit out of it, you need to wait for the timer to run out, or you'll have a buff. That's the shape of a tree. You can right-click to, to exit it. And then, uh, on top of that, these are quite recent from the... These are not cartel items. These are from the Life Day event. I just wanted to show them to you all together. Um, they are put down on the ground. And they're kind of like the Hollow Rancor. They really don't have any use. There's the life day hollow tree green and the life day hollow tree blue purple and you just put them down be festive just have fun and uh, much like the hollow shrub if you want them to go away you can right click the buffs that you have next up uh we're going to take a look at the banners these banners are same kind of thing just uh just fun they don't have any use once again there's the train there's the Republic banner, the Imperial banner, and this one is the Heroes banner. It's kind of a more generic one. They're just kind of pretty. Um, can be fun to put down when you're playing with other people to surprise them. Next up is we're going to talk about uh, regeneration items. These items kind of have a use. So all classes... Oops. All classes have um, a regeneration ability where they can regenerate their health and their um, ability energy. For example, the trooper has ammo. Um, the force users have force. They That only works outside of combat. And these items do the exact same thing. They're just a fun alternative way of regenerating health. Uh, players, especially who like to play with other people, like to use these as it's a fun little uh, thing to show off while you're in a group between combat. So here's Hollow Call. So I'm literally just sitting here regenerating health as I'm using this. Um, it's also a fun little roleplay thing you might want to get that you can use uh, to show your character kind of chatting it up. And if I had any health missing, that would have regenerated it. Here's another one. This is the Life Day Orb. This one's just really pretty. Um, it's one of the original items that came out around the Life Day events, one of the very old ones. Um, it's based off of something from the uh, Christmas, the Star Wars Holiday Special, the really bad one that was on TV. The Great Hypergate. This one's this one's like a fan favorite. So this one's based on the Terror from Beyond operation, and it sucks your character into like a vortex, and they actually disappear for a while. That can be a really fun one to 
pop out to for in front of newer players. The Starfighter battle camera is another kind of holographic for generation one. Oh, you can't see the best right here. I'll go over here. Plays a lot of noise too. So I'm just regenerating health. And it kind of shows like a like a mini space battle going on. This is also another cool kind of roleplay related item you could use. Next up, oh, this is one of my favorite ones. This one, I don't know who on the team figured this out, but it is silly. This is Bain Death. <laughs> so your character doesn't actually die. They look like they're dead and they have the light that comes out of them like when an enemy has dropped some reward you can pick up. And so it's fun to prank your friends, especially when there's other loot nearby. You do this and then they'll go try and pick you up, <laughs> pick up your loot, not realizing it's you. <laughs> it's very, very silly. And the, um, the light that goes out is kind of random. You can get a bunch of, of the different normal colors to pop out of you. Apparently I just want to be green right now. Ta-da! And just your character falling over and going blah is, is pretty funny. Next up, we're going to take a look at another Life Day item. This is the Life Day Surprise. This is, once again, a regeneration item. <laughs> Just a giant Christmas present. Pops up on top of you. <laughs> and uh, you uh, surprise yourself out of it at the end of the regeneration. And you can like use these over and over. They are not one use in any way. Once you have it, you have it forever. Next up is going to be the Mind Trap. Oh, this one will be fun. So this is based off of something in the very first operation to come out um, called Eternity Vault. In the very last fight against Soa, there are these actually Mind Traps. These are part of the fight and your character gets sucked into them and your teammates have to rescue you. So a lot of players like this one just because of like the nostalgia of it, of like going into that raid. And it's very recognizable as being something very, very Sotori. Next up is from the same operation, Soa. So this is a, once again a very silly reference to the operation, the first one, Eternity Vault. And uh, at the very last fight, you'll see the boss in kind of a glowing yellow egg floating in the center um, with those little triangles holding him up. So it's very fun. Next up is Credit Flip. This is probably a favorite with smugglers. I would guess. You lean up against a light post that appears and then take out a coin and flip it in the air. I like taking screenshots with this one. <laughs> you may have seen me using it in some of my videos. Next up is the Chance Cube. If you like coinage, there's a whole bunch more. And your character is kind of pretending to gamble. They're blowing on their dice, their chance cubes rather, rolling them, and yes, I won! And there's a bunch of coins that appear, so you can, you can be silly with that with a friend too. And then next up is going to be the Colto Tank. I like this one, it's very cool, it's very Star Wars. So a Colto Tank, the idea is that you would go in it, usually not in full armor, but whatever, we're on the go. Um, and the liquid in there would heal you. And a lot of these you can do some kind of silly stuff. If you hold down your mouse and then use your, I think it would be your left and right keys on your keyboard, you can like rotate your character. And that's how I was rotating my little tree earlier too. Um, the Carbonite Chamber, I think this has been in a couple different free promotions as well, but you can still get it from the cartel market. You just get encased in carbonite and then you free yourself. <laughs> Next up is going to be some calisthenics. So we're going to do loosen up. Oh yeah, yeah. Get that stretch out there. Yes, yes. Gotta stay limber when fighting the Empire. Just a fun, silly little... Um, animation where your character stretches. Next in that list is push-ups. 
The character makes a funny little noise and then gets to work. All right, all right, already. Stop showing off. Next is a uh, one-handed handstand. Woohoo! Oh, my cape's a little cranky about that, but my hands aren't. Yeah, your character just kind of stands there. It's kind of funny. I, I like seeing people use it. Um, next is kind of the opposite of exercise, but mime. Also has your character just moving around, enjoying their life. You'll actually sometimes, when you're previewing items, see your character do this animation in the preview window. Now let's take a look at some other types of items that'll move around you. So here's the remote control starship. Just the same thing, regeneration item. It's kind of <laughs> flies around. You can spin your character and make it go extra fast. Or slow by spinning the opposite direction. <laughs> And there's also another one of these called the Remote Control Ebon Hawk, kind of like that Senya Tyrell Hollow statue I mentioned at the beginning, that's an anniversary item. The Remote Control Ebon Hawk is very, very much the same thing. You can go to the anniversary vendor every year and uh, go get this item. Just, just a fun little silly item. And the Ebon Hawk is from the Knights of the Old Republic games. Next up on the list is going to be, there's going to be a bunch of these kind of uh, robot-like regeneration items. So there's a turret. Pew pew. Yes, that's how I regenerate health too. There's the HY-G9 Vanity Chamber. Giving me a, giving me a haircut. Um, it's kind of awkward because I'm wearing a helmet. I do not recommend you get your hair cut by this thing. It doesn't seem like it's very safe. Next up is the Rapid Repair Drones. Just kind of following the concept that these toys are meant to regenerate your health, so they're healing you and repairing you. Next up is the sparring droid. Yeah, champion! I like the uh, character animation for this one. Next up is the Scar Removal Droid. Kind of looks silly because my character's wearing armor, but that's okay. <laughs> Next up, we'll have the Supply Pack. <laughs> Puts up a little light in your little camp, I guess you could say. It's just kind of a silly kind of in-character thing. Depending on what type of character you have, a little less flashy than the other ones. Next we've got Fashion Check. Got a little mirror that you're like looking at yourself in. I'm wearing, once again, a helmet. <laughs> Makes it a bit silly because I'm fixing my hair. Here we've got the hut ball punch. This is different from kick the hut ball that you may be familiar with. Kick it! Oh, okay. No kick it. <laughs> Here's a very silly one. This is a very early one. The portable relaxation unit. <laughs> it's 
literally just you sitting in your chair, enjoying your life. That's it. And you're regenerating health. A comfy chair. It's very silly. And emergency medical table. And this is once again one of those regenerative idea ones. Data entry. This one's really cool. This is actually a reference to a player of the game. Um, you may have seen her site, Delphi.net. And this is kind of a, in homage to all the work she's done. And the reason we know that is because when you hover over the item, it says, This remote access point to the hollow net was provided by Cartel Associate. Uh, so the way they spelled it, like it, as if it was a droid name, was 0U-1FY, which if you kind of cross your eyes a little bit, looks like Delphi. I always thought that was a, a really nice reference. Um, warm hands. This one's just a little sweet, sweet one. Keep yourself warm. And in a similar vein of things, there's also the camping one. Sit down by the fire, invite your friends over to slash sit beside you. We got a little meat stick kebab there. Next up, we've- oh, this one's a very fun one. This is also very much a fan favorite because it's just so over the top. It's probably the biggest toy in the game, like, in terms of size. So this is the Orbital Colto Strike. People usually refer to it as Colto Strike. So your character has kind of got green things, and then all of a sudden it's just a blast from the sky of Colto. Uh, healing liquid, I guess you could say. It doesn't make any sense at all. It's like it's like a ship is beaming Colto energy down on you. Makes no sense. But it's very silly. Um, it reminds a lot of players of like an alien beaming you up into their UFO. <laughs> uh, <laughs> silly. Like if you want to do this, you can spin around. <laughs> um, and then next up is going to be this pocket sarlacc. This is another one a lot of players think is very fun and silly. These are probably going to be on the more expensive side of things and you just get, yeah, you get munched by sarlacc and you're regenerating health. And it'll spit you out back afterwards. Sounds very silly, very, very Star Wars. Um, this next one is a meditation chamber kind of meant to remind people of Darth Vader after he's getting healed. Kind of goes in there. You can kind of see yourself in there. Not really. It's a bit weird. And then, if you like that, there's an even better version called the TRK-R Treatment Chamber or Trigger Treatment Chamber. And it has, it's a pumpkin. And plays music. And a hot laugh. <laughs> and a monkey lizard laugh at the end. <laughs> that was so tough. That one's another really, really hard one to find. The idea was that it would go on sale on the cartel market around Halloween time every Halloween, I think. But then... Then it never it never came back. Like it, I haven't. It wasn't for sale last Halloween, so it took me a really long time to even be able to find one, much less afford it. So this one's also really fun. This is the celebration mishap. I think this is one of the few that I bought back in the day, when I was still had a newer account because I thought it was so funny. But once again, a generation item and. Uh, Fireworks everywhere and fire and explosions and your character is like, oh no, oh no. This one, yeah, I like that one a lot. Probably one of my favorites just because it's so chaotic. And then if you like that but can't afford it, there is another fun one called Fireworks Celebration Backpack. This is a anniversary item. Once again, you'll be able to pick up uh, at the end of the year. 
for free. So your character is a little one-man band with fireworks. And I uh, just really have an adder there. And then you drop it on the floor and you're like, uh, oh, what do I do now? While there's still fireworks shooting at your back. And if you like that one, but don't like the fireworks, there is one man band by itself, which is a cartel item, where you really go to town. Um, and by to town, I mean all over the floor. Oh, well. <laughs> It doesn't actually, uh, it, does it play music? I can, I can check really fast. I have my music turned off. Oh, it does. Does the other one? Oh, yes, it does. All right, next up is the vending machine. This one's a another very silly one. I don't see this one used a lot. Uh, it's quite goofy. So a vending machine falls out of the sky. Your character types in which thing they want and gets some type of drink, I think. Yeah, they're taking a sip. So let me, let me do that one one more time. Um... The main way I've seen people use this vending machine is you go stand beside a friend and then drop a vending machine on top of them. Oh, I think this one may have different treats in it than the last one. Not sure. Not sure exactly what's in there that you'd want to eat. It's very silly. Uh, let's see, next up is Fearsome Rage. This one's just really well done. I think you guys are going to enjoy this. So that one is a reference to Kylo Ren in the newer Star Wars movies of him just getting angry and smashing everything. Um, and the description says, sometimes even the galaxy's greatest heroes need to vent their frustrations. <laughs> you regenerate health in your class's energy pool while wreaking havoc. I like also that you don't have to be a force user to smash it up. Ah! I think a lot of people like that one as well, just because it's so, so ridiculous. Oh no, the noises are still playing in the background. Okay, here's one of the funniest ones in the game. This is Kai Zyken's Unparalleled Log Mount. So Kai Zyken is kind of a joke character, I guess you could say. I believe he was introduced in the Shadow of Revan expansion. You'll see him with all the pirates on, on Rishi. Um... And so it's called a mount in the name, but it's not actually a mount. It's literally a log that you sit on top of and you generate health. Like I can't, I can't go forward on this thing. I can't spin around, which is also fun. Um, I don't know where this exact joke came from, but it's very, very silly. Just make sure you don't confuse it for an actual mount because there is, there is an actual mount that was a reward for helping on the test server. Then next up is the party Jawa. <laughs> this one kind of sort of has a use. Uh, its main goal is just to be fun and silly. It, it's once again a, I think it's an anniversary reward. I believe you can get it each anniversary though. It's labeled as a cartel item. And you can right click it to make it go away. But there are some achievements you can get um, with the party Jawa. Um, that involved killing other players on places I think like Oricon. You'd have to look them up. The Celebration Jawa is a similar one that was released Wookie! later for a different anniversary. So this guy's got little balloons. Okay, you can you can go away, buddy. And the music therapy probe is a fun one. Oh, I somehow got interrupted. How'd that work? St whatever you're doing, stop! Oh, and it has a really long cooldown. We'll come back to this one. Oh no, I broke it somehow. Look, my character's stuck dancing. This is, this is, uh, we're doing it live, people. Maybe if I use another one, it'll fix me. Okay, we're fixed. 
<laughs> um, so here's a, a silly one. This is a training droid. Calls the small but advanced training droid to hover at the side of the target humanoid enemy. So speaking of target humanoid enemies, I found this player had, had snuck into my stronghold, which is publicly listed. Um, you're not an enemy, but I can use the ball toss on you, where I check a ball at your head. That's a fun toy. Once again, no actual- hi there! No actual use, just silly. The Life Day Snowball Cannon is during the holiday time. Flings a snowball at somebody. Um, there's also a, like an individual snowball item you can throw that you can get during the Life Day event. And uh, they have a- dur during the rest of the year they don't have a use other than to be silly. Uh, but during the event they help you gain rewards when you chuck snowballs at people. In a similar vein, the Life Day Tinsel Bomb is kind of a holiday item. And it puts like a sparkles on the person. And the snowballs put uh, snowflakes on them. There's the flare gun, which is also, you can get it in the digital deluxe version. Your character just shoots a flare gun up in the sky. Okay, let's see if we can get the music therapy pro working. Oh, nice. Life of the party. So this one, you can actually make everyone around you dance as well while you're regenerating health. And then there's some other fun items. These ones are one of the earlier toys when they were still thinking of cool ideas. Um, glowing Eyes Gold. It literally just activates gold eyes on your character. I'm gonna hide my helmet so you guys can see this one. There we go. And it makes your eyes glow. If you've got certain types of masks, it looks especially cool because you can see it partially through the mask. And there's also glowing eyes dash red. And these kind of have a little bit of an animation. It's a bit hard to see. It's kind of a cloudy red animation. Yeah, these ones are, are often, I think they're quite cheap on the GTN, so they're easy to pick up. A lot of people use them for roleplay or for taking screenshots with their favorite Sithy outfit kind of thing. So now I'm going to show you guys some of the toys that are not available on the cartel market. Okay, so next up we're going to take a look at some of the items that you can get that are toys in Star Wars The Old Republic that are not necessarily from the cartel market. Some of these are reputation items, some are from special events, there are some, some are just silly special items hidden around the world. So I'm going to start you off with a really, really cool one called the Dreadful Amulet. So this is actually part of a secret quest um, that's available in Star Wars The Old Republic. It's a group quest. You're meant to go fight this really strong creature called Ten Stack Dreadtooth, and you get this Dreadful Amulet, and you, you can use the amulet to summon a secret boss in Terror from Beyond called the Dreadful Entity and it's quite a hard fight. Not a lot of players have done it, um, but the actual toy itself, the Dreadful Amulet, uh, if you're not looking to summon the boss that day, you can use it once every 24 hours and it makes your character kind of um, shake their head and be scared and, uh, and it also gives uh, everyone around you an animation and it sometimes shakes the screen and uh, makes everyone around you make noises. It's kind of a, a fun, interesting toy to have. Next up, there's some very easy ones to get. There's the Imperial Social Badge and the Republic Social Badge. So the Republic Social Badge, you can uh, you get it from the one of the introductory quests about uh, social points and you're given the task to go buy the item from the social vendor. It doesn't even have any use. Um, it just wants you to go buy the item and use it. I don't even think you need to use it. But uh, otherwise, if you want, you can go back and get the item and from the vendor and just use it to put a Republic symbol over your head. Uh, quite a fun little item that not a lot of players, I think, remember or know about. Same thing for Imperial side. You can go get that Imperial social vendor. Uh, symbol and it's an item in your inventory and you can get it in the Droman Cost Cantina and the Republic one in the I'm trying to remember the course one of the Coruscant Cantinas oh the one by the Senate here's a really fun and silly one that a lot of players know about this is the Zerka Kratomatic 
This item literally has no use except it turns you into a crate or some other item. Um, other players will not see you as using the same item. Like, you might be a bush and another player may see you as a crate and there's various different crates and you're just a, you're just a box. That's it. It's a very, very rare, silly item. And... Uh, it can kind of drop from anywhere, from any enemy on any planet. It's just a very, very rare drop. And you can also buy and sell it on the GTN. One of the interesting things is that uh, you do not bind the item to you once you use it. So you can resell it once you've used it. There's also an achievement available for using the item. A more newer item is the Zerka Prototype C80M4T item, and this can come out of the daily login crate, specifically the Zerka one, as a rare drop. I haven't gotten a hold of this one yet, but this player did, and uh, they're willing to show it to me. They, it turns you into a crate, and the crate is defective. Um, and there's also an achievement for getting this one, and there's a very rare chance that the player's crate might not be defective, <laughs> and it might be whole. Once again, no real use, just for fun. There's the dueling banner. This is actually a cartel market item, but I need to show you a clip with another player. So if you have this unlock, it's not really an item, it's an unlock that you use. And when you duel another player, you get this really sweet, huge dueling banner right here. Instead of, normally there's nothing at all except a little blue light. So it only shows up and you don't have to uh, like use it every time you duel. As far as I can tell, there's no way to turn it off either. So if you need a little more music and dancing in your life, there's three other related items. There's the Rhythm Augmentation Droid, and this one just plays some little music from a droid with little speakers. And you can get this if you have a security key attached to your account. You can get that for free. You just download it to your phone and it helps uh, keep your account safe. And the vendor is located on the fleet. And then there's also two social items. There's the Party Instigator, which requires Social 5. You can pick it up um, on Balmora maybe on Terrace Imperial side, and it causes your character and characters around them to start dancing. Like, it makes a little party. Um, the strange thing, as far as I can tell, it doesn't actually play any sound, though. Uh, and the other social dancing item is the Galactic Party Bomb, and this requires social 10, so the max social level available, and you can pick it up on Corellia. Uh, you throw a party bomb, it causes all characters within the radius to dance, a disco ball to float in there, a confetti, and it costs 100,000 credits. It also gives you achievement the first time you use it. On top of those social items, there is two other social items you may or may not know about. It's the Imperial and Republic targeting devices, and these are also from the social vendors, the early ones, and you buy the item, and then you can put the item on your quick bar or use it from your inventory to put a little marker over the critter. Um, there's not really a ton of use for these because there are markers actually built into the game if you're in a group, but it can be a fun little thing to show off. And here's the Republic one. It uh, makes a little green symbol over their head. It was just something they added early on to the game as a, I believe it's in the, I don't know, I guess it's just a fun social item. There's no real useful thing right now. There's the Life Day Hollow Shrub. This one's marked as a cartel market item as well. It's kind of like the blue hollow shrub disguise in that it doesn't do anything. It just turns you into a tree, but this one's green and life day related. Just, just a fun little silly one. Speaking of markers, these are a special unlock item called uh, technical markers. So you can get it from the cartel market as like an item, or you can buy it through your legacy panel. And this lets you put these markers down um, from your abilities once it's unlocked. And it's damage, healer, and tank. And the idea is that if you're in a group type of content, you can mark on the floor where you'd like your team to go stand. So in the actual fight that we're in right now, um, I'm just putting them down for fun, but you can actually see uh, one of my other 
group members has marked a path in the background with healer symbols about where they want us to walk during a certain phase of the fight. And during a different phase of the fight, uh, they were earlier putting down different markers that tell us where they want us to stand because we can't stand too close to each other. We take a bunch of damage. So these are just super useful in general to have if you're doing any type of operations and uh, want to be able to mark where people need to go because often you can't run close to the enemies or you'll start the fight so you can use the markers without triggering anything. The training droid which is a part of the digital deluxe pack again I can get it at sutter.com slash buy it just puts you have to select the enemy and it literally puts a training droid beside them it doesn't do anything really at all it's kind of like another type of marker some of the earlier things that they made weren't very exciting or fleshed out, um, but they got more creative as time went on. Speaking of being creative, here's a very silly one. This is called Yarvox Gratitude, and this is an item that you have to earn. You cannot buy this one. Um, well, sort of. Um, you cannot buy it on the cartel market or GTN, that's for sure. There is a special event called the Dantooine event better properly known as the pirate incursion event and during the event there's some heroics you can complete however one of the heroics you can instead pay a ransom of 150 million credits to complete the quest if you happen to do this 10 times you get an achievement and you also get the ability to buy this toy called yarvox gratitude it's kind of like a a joke i guess you could say for people who have way too much money um it just makes credits pop out of your character and turns your character yellowy, goldish, glowing color. It has no other use. It's literally useless. Um, it's just a fun, silly thing. And it's called the Golden Dreamer. They said it was ridiculous, that it couldn't be done. That Yarvox dreams could only ever be dreams. Well, as the new co-owner of Star Cluster, Yarvox says to those who doubted him what he has always said, hand over the money or I'll shoot. Brought to you by the Yarvox Corporation. And it says that because you paid him 150 million credits. Oh, it's 15 million credits each time. And then it adds up to 150 million credits. So he's super rich now. Very silly. Um, and for those of you, yes, who watch my Twitch stream in the mornings, that's where the, the golden dream joke comes from. Speaking of interesting ones, here's the... Uh, I gotta check what this one's called real fast. This is called the Honorary Bouncer's Badge, and this one's really cool. Um, I need to... I don't have this one yet. It's a... it's quite a strange one. Um, so this item is on Mech Shaw, and it specifically requires uh, you to complete certain achievements related to some of the side quests. So you may need to look this one up a little more but basically the bouncer's badge is similar to yarbox and that it doesn't have a use it's just kind of a reward cosmetic item um it turns your character a dark blackish color makes purple credits fly out of you and then it makes purple kind of glows on your character and red glowing eyes this isn't the best clip but it's a very fun item and a lot of characters like to combine both the yarbox and the bouncer's badge to make a really weirdly colored glowing character. So let's take a look at some of these reputation and event items now. So there is the food launcher from the Feast of Prosperity event which only comes once a year in the summer. And these food launcher items as far as I can tell have no use. They're not like the snowballs in, in that they're an intrinsic part of the event. Um, but it's just very silly. It throws some nasty food at the character and the character has a bunch of leaves flying around them. There's a single use one that you can get one for free when you do the event in the summer. Or there's an expensive uh, permanent food launcher, like a bazooka, um, that you can get from the vendor. It's quite expensive though and you can just throw as many food as you want at people. This event they were very creative with the toys. Um, so another toy that you can get is there's no use for it again um it's literally just a toy no use at all you can use the backpack item from your inventory and you'll run around with a backpack full of food that drops food behind you <laughs> as you run <laughs> it's a very very silly item 
Um, what's nice though is, as far as I can tell with the way the timer works, as soon as it wears off, you can you can use it again. So if you want to just continuously be wearing a backpack all day, have fun. And it's not like a regen item. As far as I can tell, you can go do all the things you would normally go and do. Very, very silly item. I, I like this one a lot. Um, and the last toy from this event is called Meditative Sa Satiation. And it has, it's a regen item, kind of like some of the other ones we saw earlier. Your character sits on the floor and um, dreams about food. I guess there's a little hollow projector. I guess they're meditating over the idea of roast Gorak. I, I don't know. A very silly one. Very weird uh, kind of concept. It was a very silly event during the summer. Very lighthearted. And there's also a bunch of emotes from that event too, which is cool. Another one that we can take a look at is one of the early reputation toys. So there's another repeating event called the Gree event, um, the relics of the Gree event. And this is the Gree digitizer cube. This is a regen item. There's also a pet version of this little guy, but you'll float in the air and it regenerates you with alien technology. This kind of kind of simple, fun animation thing. Um, from the Life Day event, this is a newer item. They added a toy called Hand Warming, and you just you you warm up your hands over a fire. So there's two other um, kind of related emotes. There's one where you're warming your hands over like a barrel that has a that has some coals in it and there's another one where there's a campfire that you sit beside but hand warming is different it's just you warming your hands over a fire very simple during the summer oh i think the feast of prosperity is actually during the fall sorry uh this is the summer event the narshada nightlife event is a kind of gambling casino cantina related event and one of the rewards you can get with your event currency is a hollow slot machine. It's a really, really silly one. Um, as far as I can tell, you always win, um, but it just regenerates health and it's your character playing a little slot machine. I think that's almost it. One more I wanted to show you is the Kick the Hut Ball. This is a Cartel Market item one, but it's a very, you can only activate it while you're playing hut ball so the way it works is you click the item from your inventory and uh without it this is what picking up the hut ball looks like hut ball is a player versus player map they're randomized uh when you queue up for player versus player content in this specific case i'm in the rishi stronghold and you can actually make your own custom hut ball matches so here's what normally looking up the picking up the hut ball and throwing it looks like so i just checked it yeah kind of boring. So now I'm going to go into my inventory and activate the kick the hut ball item, which gives me a buff. Now I picked up the hut ball. Now let's see what happens. Kwacha! And you like kick it in the air. Um, I think the funniest part about this is that uh, when you're playing hut ball during the official version, like with the announcer, it'll tell you not to kick the hut ball because huts don't have feet. Is that a kick? What did I say about kicking the hut ball? So there is, I believe, one more toy that I don't have, and I also don't have any footage of, and it's called, I believe it's called the Dreadful Orb, or something similar. So we we took a look at the Dreadful Amulet earlier, and that one has a, a chance to move on to a second secret boss, and that one I'd really like to see one day. Maybe I can find a clip before we finish this video. On top of those items, there are some single-use silly toy items called Sparkle Powder. So the original Sparkle Powder Blue, um, you can chuck it on yourself or chuck it on a friend or chuck it on an NPC and you use it once and the item goes away. It just makes you sparkly. Doesn't do anything. Um, and these you could buy, I believe, from the Revan vendor and you could sometimes find them at, at random vendors along the way. They're just a silly item. It's fun to throw them on friends. However, there was red sparkle powder introduced to the game during a single time event that is now retired called the Shevin event. 
and there's sparkle powder red and this is really hard to get now you can technically buy it from the event ambassador on the fleet and it costs a bunch of like Rakul plus Gree plus bounty event currency it's totally not worth it so maybe it'll bring back an easier way to get this one lastly the very quite new uh sparkle powder purple one of the cool things about it is that it's quite easy to get um so something new that's been introduced is login rewards and every day that you log in you'll move up a day in the track and eventually once you get to i think it's the fifth day no seventh day end of the week um you will get a pile of five purple sparkle powders that you can just throw on people and have fun or throw on yourself it's even especially more fun if you throw all multiple colors of sparkle powder on yourself there's also some toys called Jawagrams, and these are kind of weird and interesting. Um, so the idea is that you could get this item, and you would usually use it on another player, not yourself. I'm just using it on myself for the previews, and you would surprise them with a Jawagram. It's usually just like a little Jawa flipping itself in the air and then giving you some type of... of encouraging message so there's i'm going to show you them all real fast so there's five that are reusable that have like non-reusable one use ones but also have a reusable version so there's uh the one i just showed you was the good job reusable jawagram good job so this one is awesome like you want to tell someone a plus they're awesome little jawa flipping in the air and bowing to you and to get rid of these guys, you can right click uh, the buff they give you. We've got Mid Force Boo with you. More Jawa flipping. Mid Force Boo with you. Little blue one. There's the nice try one. I don't know. If, are you supposed to use that in like PvP or something to troll people? I don't know. <laughs> And the Jawa falls on the ground. And lastly, party on. So all of these are reusable. They do not get consumed on use. So they're more like the traditional toys. Now here's where it gets tricky. So those have reusable and non-reusable versions. There is also three different Jawagrams that do not have a reusable version. Why? I don't know. So once you use these, they are one use. And they are very, very hard to find these days. They used to be, I think, for sale on the cartel market. Or you could get them very frequently from the cart the old cartel packs. But um, because they aren't anymore and they aren't really easy to find anymore. And they're one use. They're very expensive if you can find them at all. So here's the Jawagram flower delivery. Um, which I think was the easiest one for me to find. I think maybe even a vendor might sell it. I'm not sure. Or sold it at one time. So you would have someone go deliver flowers. Holographic flowers. So you're, you're looking to buy GF. Just a cute little one. I think you might be able to find the flower one at the cantina. And then here's where things start getting crazy. So here's Jawagram. It's a surprise. I really wanted to get this uh, video for you guys to show you. But it cost me 500 million credits. <laughs> the I love you one. Yeah, it costs a lot on the GTN. It's one use, so it's gone forever now. And the last one was Jawagram. I love you. And this one we only saw on one server. I checked all the servers for like a month and it was like 900 million credits. Eventually the player <laughs> reduced the price to 500 million cre credits. So, yeah, expensive, not worth it, but I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this very expensive one use item. So apart from all of those, there's actually two more types of toys that I'll be covering in a different video. Those are the one use fireworks. And there's also the really cool data cubes from the cartel market that unlock additional story rather than being a true toy. If you want to show support for this channel or for this hour long video about all the toys in Star Wars The Old Republic, I would love to have your support on sudarista.com slash support. And if you want to have similar Star Wars The Old Republic videos show up on your YouTube homepage, subscribe to this channel. 
May the force be with you.